Hi, this is Matt Mountain with 410 Solutions. And having been working with Financial Services Cloud since it came out in approximately 2016, I've built a lot of functionality to take FSC for wealth management firms and to enhance it, to make it easier to use and to streamline and make them more efficient. So as part of this video, what we're gonna be walking through is standard page layouts. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you some automation around creating a household and uh, look at the household fields and relationships, uh, activity roll-ups to the household, uh, how we're gonna manage account roles, interaction summaries, and then action plans. So the first thing you're gonna see here is that uh, we are on the account and I created a person account here, Frank Jones. But the first thing I wanna to touch on is the standardized page layouts. Every page you're gonna be on, whether it's a person account, household, business, opportunity, it's laid out the same. And what I mean by that is when you come in, we're gonna be on the details tab. And that's gonna be all the information about that. Any related records, all the sub tabs are gonna sit down here. Off to the right, we're gonna have the activity tab. And we're gonna have it standardized where the first one is the log a call, new task, new event, and then email if that is gonna be used. And then up top here, we're gonna have edit and delete and any additional, additional buttons that are required. But we also have the related list quick links here. And what this does is this allows you to hover over this each one and to see any related records. So any related opportunities, files, or contacts. So every page is gonna look the same and you'll see that as we progress through the demo. Now, one of the other things is the householding model within Financial Services Cloud is awesome, but it takes a lot of clicks in order to set it up exactly how you want it. So uh, what I've done is I've streamlined that process. So if this household field is blank, right here, there's two things that are available to you. The first one is the create household button. And the second one is to household member to create household with. So in this case, Frank is married. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna add Jenny here as the spouse. And what that enables us to do is when we click the create household button, it will create the household with both Frank and Jenny. If this was blank, then it would just create the household just for Frank. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click Create Household. And now my functionality, it's gonna take about five seconds to create. And then what we need to do is just refresh. And what we're gonna see here is that now the household is the Frank and Jenny Jones household. The Create Household button is no longer here. The component to add a spouse to the household is no longer here because this is populated. So now when we click on this and go to the actual household, what we will see is we have Frank as the primary, Jenny as the secondary. And the reason why I put this in place is because oftentimes you wanna roll up data from a person account to a household or down from a household to a person account. And by having these fields here automatically populated, it makes it a lot easier to do. But when we go into the relationship tab here, what we can see is that this has already been pre-built for you. You don't have to select the person, select their role, have everything roll up and select uh, these radio buttons how they should be. It automatically does it for you. Now, if, they're, if they have a child or you know, if they're a trustee of a trust or other things, that's where you can add additional uh, household members, if you will, to this. But what we've enabled is click one button and all that is done for you. Now, what I want to do here is uh, I want to take, uh, let's just take Frank Jones here. And one of the things with Financial Services Cloud is when you complete, have an open activity or a completed activity at the person account level, it rolls up to the household, but it rolls it up into a related list up here. So one of the things that I've done is I've written functionality where it will also show up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna log a call here associated to Frank, and I'm just gonna go ahead and save it. So what my functionality does behind the scenes is it says, hey, does Frank have a household? Oh, he does, great. Let's associate this call not only to Frank, but also to the household. So now when we go to the household, 
we can see that down here. So um, one of the feedback items that I got from a lot of clients was, well, I have to look at activities here for the person account, but I have to go up here to see it. I'd really like to see it here also. Now this says zero, it just hasn't refreshed yet. So there is actually one activity here and you can see it here. So activities, yes, they roll up to the household, but we just make it a little more user friendly. Now, uh, another thing that I've got in place is uh, because of action plans, you may want to assign tasks as part of your standard processes. So for example, with client onboarding or money movement or what have you, you may always want to assign a task to the same person or you may want it to be dependent here. So I'm going to go in here and I'll add myself as this and I'm going to add uh, Bart Scott as this one and I'm just going to assign a primary and a secondary advisor. Now what this does is I've got functionality that keeps the account team here in sync. And this account team is going to be used when we uh, use action plans. So when we kick off an action plan, we may want to uh, have it do a lookup and assign the first task to the primary advisor and the second task to the secondary advisor. So with these being populated, it actually looks up here. But one of the biggest issues is that people want an easy way to uh, visualize it. So that's why I've added this here. And as you fill this out, it syncs it with the account team. Uh, we can then now leverage the account team when creating deploying action plans. Now, one of the other things is interaction summaries. So as you're meeting with your clients, your important meetings, you're going to want a way to differentiate those important meetings from the day to day. Over here in the activity, this is where you track your day to day all your activities, your calls, just things you're doing for them. Uh, and this is where emails can, can come in. So you're going to have a lot of activities here. Now, when you have your annual meetings, what I've built some functionality for is we're going to call this the annual meeting. And we're going to schedule the annual meeting for the 19th. And there's a field here called create meeting record. When you check this, not only does this put it on the calendar, it puts it on the calendar whether you check it or not. So when I go ahead and check that, what you're going to see is that it's going to show up on the 19th at 9 o'clock. Now I have something on the calendar. But what I've also done is I've leveraged interaction summaries. And uh, I've got a naming convention here where it takes the subject of the event plus the date and it creates a, an interaction summary. Now this is where you can track your important information about those meetings. So when did we talk to them about tax? You know, uh, we discussed stuff. And we've got a state retirement, financial planning, insurance, and investments. So as you come in here and whether either during your meeting or after your meeting, this is where you can type in all your notes about what was discussed. From here, you can also schedule follow-up tasks that need to be done. So you have one place where you can manage everything associated to your meeting. Now, what this also enables you to do is when we go to meetings here, over time you're going to have a lot of meetings and you're going to want to see, hey, when did I talk to him last about insurance? So you can come in here and type in insurance and say, oh, I haven't talked to him about insurance. When did I talk to him last about tax? And it'll pull up because there's some search capabilities behind the scenes when tax was discussed. So all it's looking for is where these fields filled in and then it will populate that for you and you can get a quick overview of your past discussions before your next meeting. Now what we also, uh, the last thing I want to show you today is action plans. So what we've got up here are is an action plan template called client onboarding. And as you can see here is that uh, we've assigned something to the client service associate, the secondary advisor, and the primary advisor. Now, I only have the secondary advisor and primary advisor filled in on that household. So by default, it'll assign the first task to me. 
because there is no client service associate. So it assigns it to the person that kicks off the action plan. So let's go back here. Let's take a look at this. And we are just gonna kick off the onboarding action plan. So I'm just gonna put in any value here. I'm gonna put in A because we have a naming convention in place. And we wanna start it today. Next, save. So what you're gonna see is there's gonna be five tasks. The first one is gonna be assigned to Bart. So let's go ahead and go to that action plan. And what we can see here is that uh, we've completed zero out of five. We haven't even started it yet. So as we walk through this process and complete these tasks, we can see we've completed one out of five. And when I refresh it, it's gonna say it's now, now we're in progress. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna complete that and I'm gonna refresh, complete this, refresh. So now we've done three out of five. We've done four out of five, refresh. And I, we're gonna send a thank you note. And I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. So now what we can see is we've done five out of five. This is completed. So those tasks have not only been assigned using this, but we're actually tracking how many have been done and how many, you know, and the status of each. Now, as part of that, prior to opening a uh, onboarding action plan, we probably had an opportunity for them. So uh, I didn't create one here for you. I'm just gonna go into the opportunities, but here we're looking at my opportunities. And this is across all the data that, sample data that I have in here. And this gives me the ability to look at it. I can adjust the different columns that are in here. I can sort based upon the amount, the close date, the stage. I can do it however I want. Some people like this view. Other people want to look at it in a Kanban view. Now, keep in mind that I've only got a few stages here. You may want different stages, more stages. But as I take and drag and drop this $500,000 opportunity, and I bring it over here, you're gonna see the totals at the top recalculate. So let me move it back and the totals recalculate. So this gives you the ability to summarize and take a look at how much money potential AUM do I have at each stage. So that's how the opportunity process and allows you to forecast new money that can come into the firm. So that is a quick overview of my financial services cloud overlay. I do not sell this. It's part of my service that I will deploy into your environment if you're interested in moving to financial services cloud. If you'd like to reach out, feel free to give me a call at 513-482-1127 or email me at matt, M-A-T-T, at 410 solutions.net. Thank you.